The Seventh Tower by Garth Nix. Book Six, The Violet Keystone, Chapter 18. The lonely structure in the center of the audience chamber was the imperial throne of the Chosen. Carved from a single rainbow crystal, it was an ornate and enormous chair, wide enough to seat three people. The back of it rose ten stretches from the seat and was finger thin. Light shone through it as if it were a thick pane of beautiful multicolored glass. A ring of sunstones was set in the floor around the throne, large violet sunstones soldered in place with gold. So what is the answer? asked Tal as they all stood looking at the throne. He also cast a suspicious eye at the ring of sunstones. They were too big and too purposefully placed to be decorative. They had some function, probably defensive. They might project heat or flame, or something equally dangerous. The way to the Violet Tower, said Ebbett, lies on the throne, though only the bearer of the Violet Keystone may use it. Tal looked at Mila. He felt ashamed. Mila would never have lost her half of the Keystone to Sushin, and she probably despised him for letting their enemy get such a vital thing. Mila met his gaze. Then she twisted the sunstone ring off her finger and threw it to him. He caught it reflexively, more surprised than he had ever been in his life. Mila, exclaimed Malin, what are you doing? Returning the Emperor of the Chosen's keystone, said Mila calmly, though I would like your other sunstone in return, Tal. Wordlessly, Tal threw her the sunstone he had taken from Fashnik. Then he slipped on the half keystone. It pulsed with sudden violet, a light that was answered by the ring of stones in the floor. Take it back, said Malin, her voice cool. Her eyes were cloudy, Tal saw. She was communing with the other crones. The stone is the ice cuddles now. Take it back, war chief. Jarek grunted and started toward Tal, but stopped as Mila raised her hand. I do not know how to use it to its fullest strength, she said, speaking not to the crone in front of her, but all the other crones beyond. Tal has the power, and the right. What is more important, squabbles between ice cutters and Chosen, or saving the veil? Malam was silent. Tal could not know what was happening, but Mila did. The crones were arguing among themselves and needed to vote. How exactly does the throne tie in with the way to the Seventh Tower? whispered Tal to Ebbett as the silence dragged on. Ebbett shrugged. Tal noticed the old man was keeping a wary eye on Jarek. Sit on it and we'll both find out, whispered Ebbett. Mullen coughed. Everybody stood absolutely still. Jarek's chain slowly unfolded from his hand, link by clanking link. Very well, War Chief, Mullen said in the strange combination voice of the masked crones, her words echoing through the chamber. Once more we follow your lead. We have chosen well. Trust the crones to congratulate themselves for giving in, thought Mila. Thank you, Tal said to Mila. Ebbet thinks I should sit on the throne. We should all sit on it, said Ebbet who was peering down at the sunstones in the floor, then back up at the dome high above them. Tal, you go first. Tal looked at the sunstones in the floor, too, and remembered his earlier thoughts. To be on the safe side, he summoned Violet from the keystone once more, letting it wash all over him. Then he stepped across the ring. The stones in the floor glowed, but did nothing else, not even when Ebbet and the others followed Tal. The throne was cold and hard. There was a dusty cushion on the seat, but it had long lost any comfort it once offered, and was so dusty that Tal sneezed every time he moved even slightly. Ebbet came and sat on his left, and Mila on his right. Crow crouched next to Ebbet, and Malin squeezed in beside Mila. Jarek knelt down in front of Mila and Malin, watching Tal balefully. Ebbet's maned cat flung itself down in front of the throne, under all their feet. Adris and Audris drifted up to hang on either side of the throne's back, like strange heraldic retainers. 
bit crowded, remarked Tao. What do I do now? No one answered. Great Uncle Ebbet, what do I do now? You are the emperor, snapped Ebbet. How would I know? Do something imperial, you idiot. Tal bit back a hasty reply. If he was the emperor, surely he deserved to be addressed as something more respectful than you idiot. Not that there was much hope of that from Ebbet. Still, perhaps the advice was good, however it was offered. Tal raised his hand and summoned forth more violet, sending a beam of it straight at the circle of sunstones on the floor. The stones answered immediately, flaring so brightly that everyone had to shield their eyes. At the same time, the sunstones in the rim of the dome shone brighter, and rays of violet struck down. Hundreds of distinct rays from every part of the rim connected with the circle around the throne. Well done, said Ebbet. It looks pretty, said Tal dubiously, watching the dust rise through the violet streams. But it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Apart from lifting us up, you mean? asked Mila. Tal looked at her, then back down at the floor. As usual, she was right. The throne and the circle of floor around it were slowly rising toward the dome, suspended on the hundreds of beams of violet from the rim. They were already a good twenty stretches up. Yes, he said weakly, apart from that. Well, the dome is opening at the top, added Crow. I suppose that could be counted as something else. I guess that's how we get to the bottom of the Violet Tower. Sure to be, said Tal, trying to sound confident. But Sushin may have set some sort of trap there, or he might be there himself still. We'll have to be careful. Silently and steadily, the throne continued to rise. Tal tried not to think of what might happen if the magic failed part of the way up. Audris and Adris might be fast enough to save him and Mila, but the others would fall to their deaths. They were already a hundred, no, a hundred and fifty stretches up, with a hundred to go and a very hard floor below. The magic did not fail. The throne passed through the circular gap in the dome and came to rest in another, much smaller room. It was also completely bare, and there were far fewer sunstones set in the ceiling. A broad staircase made from a pale green, highly polished stone wound up in one corner. Welcome to the seventh tower, said Tal, as they stepped off the throne and walked toward the stairs. His voice sounded strange and doom-laden, even to him, and he wished he hadn't spoken.